So Dr. Anand, how have you seen optometry evolve as a profession since you started practicing and where do you think it is headed as a profession? Well, I'll just share with you, optometry as a profession actually started way back in uh, 1920. And the role of an optometrist many, many years traditionally was actually a refraction and uh, referring to an ophthalmologist for diagnosis. Over the years, we have changed, we have seen, we have seen the great evolution coming up where it's not only refraction, it's more into diagnostic. Uh, we keep conducting conferences, seminars, where we update knowledge. We are more into diagnostic and eye, wear, eye care. So please tell us, what do you think has catalyzed these changes in optometry? Well, in recent years, uh, the changing and challenging lifestyle of people, of population, uh, from traditional to now moving on to digital world, we see different age group, you know, now more into digital world, like children. Earlier, we used to tell them no TV, less of computers. Post-COVID, we tell them more on online, online classes. That has made things very, very challenging. The more time you spend on the on digital screen, you get problems of uh, refraction, you get dry eyes. So that has become a more challenging, actually a challenging job for an optometrist because we need to actually do a thorough refraction. And as a case study, if we have a old patient and we see the difference now, we see their, their refractive error is changing drastically. So that is something which is more challenging as of now. Could you please uh, share with us what role you think associations like Indian Optometric Association is playing in terms of growth for optometry as a profession? Okay, it's a very, very interesting question. I've been there in the association for almost 24 years now. And we keep conducting seminars and from national seminars, international seminars. Our main role is now focused on uh, updating our clinical skills. We have this uh, international conferences where we get speakers from renowned, uh, renowned speakers from various parts of the globe. And we do, we, we share knowledge, we study, we uh, share clinical uh, studies where we know what is happening in all the part of the world. For example, Asia is, uh, has a big population, right? So clinical studies are a little different than what we see in Western countries. So that is tremendous knowledge which we are sharing and which we are learning ourselves. So that is where IOA plays a very, very important role. We bring everybody, all the speakers on a single platform and uh, we learn and we educate. And could you share with us what role optometrists have to play now that their role in eye care continues to evolve? I think uh, more focus is on keep, keep doing refraction, keep conducting eye, eye camps keep conducting vision screening camps because there are still those small children which uh, which actually I'll give you one more example uh, a children comes that they don't perform well in their classrooms why it's not that their IQ is lo uh, lower not necessarily because if they're sitting at the back bench they cannot see the blackboard so we they do have clinics in the schools but they are not as professionals that they can do the vision screening so the primary to, to the, the starting point has to be the vision screening once the, the parents bring the uh, child to the optom, optometrist, the vision screening is done and that is the starting point. So we need to keep conducting uh, vision screening, getting associated with the uh, NGOs so that, that undetected refractive errors is taken care and then of course give them the right product. Product which will actually control the progress of myopia. And uh, there are products and uh, we are heading for I think a big uh, revolution and taking care of the challenges. Thank you very much, Dr. Anand, for your time. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to catch up with you more in the future. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.